tonight by the Holy Spirit. I want God to impart into you one of the greatest principles I've ever learned and how to live a life in the supernatural <laughs> and how to receive. Now, some of you are already getting it before I preach it, but that's all right. Some of y'all looking like a calf at a new gate. I hope you're ready because we're about to done mess up this whole region. I can't wait till the Spirit of God starts sweeping and 200 people show up at Harvest Baptist Church on yeah. Sunday morning. They, they walk in and they start doing their, 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 their worship service and all of a sudden start people start going, you shut up. Hey. <laughs> I can't wait until incredible, awesome men of God, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be wild? Come on. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be wild that Ed Young, Ed Young Jr. gets up and he's saying, I want to karama sheke do musi hande beshe kahande. But isn't it interesting that there could be a move of God going on right next to one person, and the person next to it is missing the whole thing. Because some people say, well, man, you know, oh, how, you know, if God was there, everybody would be getting it. No, God shows up often, and very few people get it sometimes. Because, see, as long as you're a baby, God will come force feed you. I'm going to say that again. As long as you're a baby, God will come force feed you. He'll bring you a little baba. Here you go. Here you go. Little boop boop. Open, open your mouth. And your, oh, it's so cute. Okay. Oh, you got a little drippy. Huh? And that's the way a lot of Christians want to live their life. Come on. They just, just wait. Well, if the Lord wants me to have it, he'll give it to me, right? But then God says... I want you to grow up. Because I can give you some good stuff when you're a child. But I can't give you the inheritance until you grow up. Wait, 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 watch this. I can give you, I can give you, and stay with me, I can give you the abundance of my substance, but I can't give you the authority over it till you grow up. And there is a point that switches in people. Just stay with me, stay with me. There's a point that switches in people because we got to get past the point of a blessing to the point of breakthrough. Because yes. we got a lot of blessing messages and, I, and, and blessing services, and I, I love getting the blessing. But how many know there's a lot of people that get a blessing and they get a chutch and they get a jerk and they get a jiggle and so y'all y'all a bunch of you going to get that you some of you already getting it, a bunch of you going to get a lot more of it tonight. But how many know then they walk out there and there's not a whole lot of power. Huh? And I don't know about you, but I love the jerk and the jiggle and the goose bump and all that other stuff. But I, I, I don't want it just to be that. I want it to shift to the point that when I go out there. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on. Can we be real? Can we get the man? Live in the supernatural. Come on. We've got to get past the point. We've got to get beyond the point where you could get blitzed, drunk in the spirit here, and you don't even have an anointing to cast out a headache out there. We got to get to the point where we start, stop talking about the promises God has coming for us and we begin to enter into the manifestation of those promises. God had given Abraham an amazing promise of an heir. And many years went on between the promise of the heir and the manifestation of the heir. And in the process, Abraham tried to help out God. Now, I just, I'm going to put this and I'm going to leave it alone. Whenever you help out God, you're going to be in trouble. God spoke to me one time. He said, you can help me out, son, but then you're going to pay, you're going to pay for it. Something shifted in Genesis 18. Something shifted that moved Abraham from the point of simply having a promise that he's waiting on for years and years and years and years to a point where God said, now it's time for you to get it. I want to read these verses to you. Genesis 18, beginning with verse 1. And we're going to come back and look at this. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of maybe. Now, there may be a couple of, yeah, I'm going to address this. Thank you, Lord. There may be a couple of you wondering, say, well, Pastor, see, wait a minute. Why, why are you, you kind of press through that a little bit. And they, things were bubbling. Yeah, you know what? Because we could have just let it go into just a Holy Ghost, you know, get a bless me time and still walked out of there with the same power that you walked in, which ain't that much. <laughs> Or we could go and understand how to go a little farther. And stop being satisfied with a spiritual intoxication. And get to the point of a life of perpetual manifestation. As much as I love the intoxication. Don't give it up. Just go beyond. Come on. We're not playing games here, church. And this is not about just having a bless me club and another little... I'm going to get in trouble now. This is not about having another little soaking center so we can have a bunch of spiritual Holy Ghost addicts come get their weekly fix. Then the Lord appeared to him, Abraham, by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. And after that, you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. And Abraham hurried into the tent of Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, your Sarah, Sarah, your wife will have a son. Years had gone by. Years had gone by. And Abraham had been waiting for the promise to be manifested. And this day, Something shifted that initiated the promise 
that he said in the time of life, in the time of gestation, in the time of the process, the 40 weeks, I'm going to come back and your wife is going to have a child. You say, what was he saying? God was saying to Abraham, Abraham, tonight's the night. That's why Sarah laughed. She said, it ain't been the night for 20 years. What are you talking about? <laughs> How many of you want to get to the point when all those promises God has given you, he said, hey, tonight's the night. <laughs> Why is it that day it happened? Why is it that day something shifted? If we could find out the secret and the key to what took place that day, I'm telling you, you can get to the place where the promise which has been waiting is going to come to pass. You see, God was ready to release the promise, but Abraham wasn't yet positioned to receive it. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Jesus. Now, I got to say that again, because some of y'all get, get a hold of this and get, out, get, get your Baptist mindset out of you. God was ready to, you say, what do you mean by that? Well, it's all the sovereignty of God and all in God's timing. Do you know you can interrupt God's timing? Yes. Come on, the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus, she came and wanted a miracle for her daughter, and, and she sit there, and Jesus said, hey, 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 hey. It's not the time. It's not your dispensation yet. I didn't come for you. I came for the Jews. Should I give the meat met for the master's table to the dogs? And I love this woman. She didn't get offended like most American Christians. She turned around and she said, hey, even the dogs get to lick the crumbs. And Jesus said, I know I only came for the Jews, but I'm going to step out of this dispensation. I'm going to jump a couple of decades ahead, and I'm going to give this woman her miracle. Even, Jesus, even David, King David, crossed dispensations. When he went into the tabernacle and he went in there and he ate the food, he should have died for that. But he tapped into the dispensation of grace by faith. And so I, I sat there and I said, Lord, the Lord began to speak to me several years ago about these verses right here. And he said, son, I was waiting for something to shift in Abraham. So let's discover this thing together. Genesis, because then you're going to discover a whole element about stepping into a whole new dimension. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terabith trees of Mamre. The trees were a distance away from Abraham. See, every other time we see God revealing himself to Abraham, God came up to Abraham and initiated the conversation. He initiated the communication. He came right up to Abraham. This time the Lord did not come so much to Abraham because he wasn't even really coming for Abraham. He was on his way to a couple of towns called Sodom and Gomorrah to take care of some God business. And he said, well, let me, let me check out if Abraham is ready. Is he grown up enough? Is he willing to switch the way he deals with me? Because up to this point, Abraham has always waited for me to initiate the communication. He's waited for me to come to him. But I'm not going to so much come to him this time. I'm just going to pass by. I'm going to get by the trees of memory. They're a little distance away. You say, how do you know? Because in a moment we're going to read, he had to run to them. Are you all hearing me? 
And so there's God, and he's like, let's see what Abraham's going to do. Now, Abraham, the Bible says that he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Woo. He was in his comfortable place. Because have you ever been in the heat in Israel <laughs> in the summer? You don't want to get out from under that tent. You don't want to be in the tent, it's too hot. You don't want to be outside the tent because it's too hot. You want to be right there at the door with the little covering over your head so you get the breeze from outside but the protection. And you're in your comfortable place. And you don't just easily get up and get out of your comfortable place and go on a run. Come on, are y'all hearing me? In the heat of the day. But Abraham, this time God didn't simply come to him. God came near him. And when Abraham sensed the presence of the Lord near, he was willing to get out of his comfortable place. Bring me that chair quickly. Come and grab me that chair. Put it up here right here. You see, and this is part of the problem with a lot of the church in the American church. We keep settling down into our comfortable place. And it's a different place for all of us. Sometimes a comfortable place is Southern Baptist. You know, or, you know, it may, be, it may be Presbyterian where we're sitting during worship. Southern Baptist, we're standing. We might even clap. Maybe our comfortable place is a more traditional Pentecostal. If we really feel it, a hand will go up. Maybe our comfortable place is a jerk and a jiggle. Maybe our comfortable place is running around somewhere. Whatever it is, it's our comfortable place. It's the zone that we have learned to be comfortable in. And the Lord says, I'm tired of coming to you in your comfortable place. You're never going to walk in the breakthrough and the fulfillment of the promises I have for you as long as you live in your, pray, your comfortable place. So I'm going to come near you, not to you. Because I want to see how bad you want it. And Abraham, he saw the Lord out there in the distance. He immediately got out of his comfortable place. He ran to the Lord. He bowed down and he cried out, Lord, don't pass me by. Somebody say, Lord, don't pass me by. Now, you got to get a little gospel in you on that one. Come on. Come on. Say, Lord. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. <laughs> you see, I'm not going to sit back and just believe the lie anymore. Well, if God wants me to have it, he'll come back here in my frozen chosen seat and he'll just put it on me. Because that's the way children are. I'm in trouble tonight. Children will sit in their seat and cry until someone gives them what they want. But somebody that's grown up sees something out there. It's not even right around them. And they say, hey, I want that. They begin to change the way they deal. And they begin to sense the presence of God. Instead of sitting back church after service saying, I wish God would touch me. Why doesn't God touch me? When they sense the presence of God come in, they stop immediately and say, hey, hey, Lord, don't pass me by. Somebody say, Lord, don't pass me by. Say it again. Say, Lord, don't pass me by. I'm not going to let it go. And it didn't matter if he came for you. Because there's so many services. God came in the service. He didn't come for the preacher. He didn't come for the worship team. He didn't even come for most of the people. But there was some dear little lady in there with some faith who was grabbing a hold of God. And God said, I got to show up to touch her. But even if he didn't come for you, when you sense him nearby, if you reach out and grab a hold of him and say, hey, 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 Lord. Come on. Come on. Huh? There, there are people last night, they saw these people get up and heal, and they said, oh, I wish I would have got my healing. No, that's, that's the wrong reason, wrong attitude. You should have sit there and said, Lord, you healed that person. Hey, don't pass me by. 
Now look, let's read this. Watch this, watch this. He said, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran. Everybody say, he ran. He ran. And say, he bowed himself. And then he, he actually, he accosted them. He grabbed a hold and said, hey, stop. Some of y'all look at, we got to get rid of some of these southern niceties out of us. This southern politeness with God. Matthew chapter 11. Father, I give you praise. Hey, someone said the devil's a liar. Oh, say, Lord, don't pass me by. Say it again. Say, Lord, don't pass me by. Verse 12, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 says this. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Huh? Turn that on the amplified. This will fry your socks off. It gets worse. Somebody say, Lord, don't pass me by. Put it up on the Amplified. From the days of John. Do we got it? From the day, there it's, it's there, there it is. From the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault. And violent men, and mainly women, <laughs> seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with the most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Someone say intense. Intense exertion. That means you're not praying like this. You're not worshiping like this. This is the day. This is the day how the Lord has made. Woo, let the Lord have. Come dragging in 20 minutes late. Um, well, Brother Steve, you don't understand. I need my miracle. I just can't get there on time. You get to work on time. The problem is you're just in your comfortable place. I show up when I want to show up. I get there when I get there. I'm just like, you know, and God just going to have to meet me where I'm at. Well, he will. He'll come deal with your little baba and your little pinky and your little Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I love you. He got baby so cute. He loves you as a baby. He doesn't love you any less with your baby and you start trying to walk. He thinks it's cute. But he ain't giving you the keys to the Mercedes. He'll give you a little plastic car that you can't break. The problem is in the Pentecostal church, we think the plastic car is the Mercedes. I got a word. I got a prophecy. That's wonderful. I got to speak a prophecy. I got a brave old person. They got to touch. That's awesome. You know, your little plastic toy gifts of the spirit car. He lets you play with, but he wants to give you power and authority to take over regions and cities. Huh? But he says, I, I got a, I got a promise son a covenant promise for you but I can't give it to you as long as you haven't grown up and I want to I want to see if Abraham's ready and Abraham got up someone say he ran, he ran. said again see he ran. he ran first sign that you're ready is when you sense the presence of God you're willing to dump all all of your preconceived ideas, all of your comfort zone, all of your tradition, all of your habits. And you're willing to get out where it's a little hot. Yeah. 
Now, I'm going to preach it to the choir because y'all willing to come to church twice in one day. Lord, I'm in so much trouble. I'm not trying. I'm not trying. Come on. Amen. It used to be bad. Man, there was a day not too many decades ago, people would go into church seven nights a week, stay till, stay till one, two in the morning, just bring their kids, put them little beds under the pew, just let them lay them out there. Come on, somebody. Get up and go to work. God gave them supernatural strength. Got to stay home and watch Desperate Housewives. You watch that, you're going to be a Desperate Housewife. But... I wonder why I don't have my, my blessing. Don't know why I don't have the breakthrough. Oh, God said, I love you. Give you a little binky. Give you a little toy car. But I want to give you the keys of the kingdom. Someone say, Lord, Lord, don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. So first step, here we go. First step, step number one. He ran to them. Ever say he ran. he ran. You don't miss the moment of your visitation. So many people miss their miracle because when it starts moving, they kind of got, they're so, mm. preacher sit there and says, there's an anointing here for someone to get healed quickly. Get up your seats and run. Uh, um, um. Um, I'm coming. By the time they get halfway there, the miracle done left. It's down the street. You think I'm kidding? I watched more miracles leave because somebody wanted to get, well, I don't really need to run. How bad do you want it? Well, I just don't think it's necessary. Well, you're right. You don't think. <laughs> huh? You're in your comfort zone. Well, I'm not comfortable running. I'm not comfortable moving fast. I'm not comfortable. Someone say, come on. I mean, Jesus turned to the man with the withered hand. Stretch your forth your hand. Well, I just don't believe that's appropriate, Jesus. Uh, you can heal it, stretch it out right here. I don't need to read it. With Thank God the woman with the issue of blood. She got out of her comfort zone. Come on, you, you, know, you understand they did not treat women well back then. Huh? They didn't treat women well back then. And they sat there and, and, and here she is. And she probably had that. They were pushing her around. She probably had to get on her hands and knees and crawl through that. And if I could just touch the hem of his, I don't care. They're kicking me, spitting on me. I'm sure they were yelling at her. Woman, what are you doing? Get up. I don't listen to you. If I could just touch if I could just get close, grab a hold and say, Lord, don't pass me by. The problem is we haven't become desperate enough. We haven't learned that God requires us when we grow up to switch the way that we re relate to him. That he no longer wants us for, to wait for him to come to us, but he wants us to pursue him. Yes. Oh, shakara, my son. Someone said the devil's a liar. Someone say he ran. And then he bowed himself to the ground. He humbled himself. Because that's the second thing it's going to take, abject humility. You run to God, you pursue him, and you humble yourself, which means you empty yourself of all your preconceived ideas and all your conditions. Uh, so, well, Lord, Lord, just I'll do this, but just don't ask me to do that. And I'll do this, but just don't ask me to do that. And I'll do this, and just don't ask me to do that. He says, that's all right. Here's your toy car. As long as you got conditions, you ain't getting the keys. Come on, y'all hear me? Shikara my son, Shikara my son. Devil, you're a liar. Someone said the devil's a liar. 
Say it again. Say, the devil's a liar. The He bowed, he ran and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest, your, rest yourselves under the tree. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make a sacrifice. Hmm. He went, got a calf. Do you know that was a sign? They only ever killed an animal for a visitor of superior rank and to do a calf was still even a higher stretch of hospitality it was a recognition of humility and a recognition of honoring of God Lord when you even come near I'm going to break out of whatever comfort zone I'm in I'm going to pursue you I'm going to humble myself I'm going to lay a hold of you not let you go I'm going to be like Jacob with the angel. I'm not letting you go till you bless me. And I'm going to sacrifice something to you. Yes, Father. God will never. Phew, release you into the power of your promise without significant sacrifice because if you don't sacrifice you won't value it God's not a welfare state my God I'm in trouble now that's how we like the church. We want it to be a welfare, spiritual welfare state. We want somebody here to be the producers that get up here, sacrifice, pray, get a word from God, get an anointing from God, get a touch from God, and then God take from them and give it to us without any sacrifice. Oh. That's how you become dependent upon man and not God. Oh. Ha. He's, ha. I'm in so much trouble on that one. Turn to your neighbor and say, I, I, I don't think he's talking about you. <laughs> Shoo. See, Abraham changed the way he came after God. He changed. He grabbed a hold of it. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by... The violent take a bye. The violent take a bye. They're sitting there saying, you know what? It doesn't matter what comfort zone I got to get out of. It doesn't matter what I got to change. I'm going to humble myself and let go of every preconceived idea. I'm going to let go of every way God used to move in my life. Well, the Lord has always touched me this way. Yeah, but that, that's, and if that's all you're going to let him touch you in that way and respect to, respond to him in that way, then you're never going to go beyond that level. He says, I need a people that are going to go through the highways and the byways, that are going to knock on every door, that are going to pursue me wherever I am, that are going to lay a hold of me and grab a hold of me and say, God, I'm not letting you go. I was in a meeting with Dr. Morris Cirillo, January of 1990. God had been teaching me this principle, powerful meeting. And he was preaching on uh, moving in, in agape love, love, power, signs and wonders and miracles through agape love. And the power of God began to sweep that meeting and people were crying out to God. And I'm there on about the fifth row and I got my youth group with me. And I'm on the fifth row, and they're, they're, they're praying, and they're going after God. Oh, God, I'm on that they're praying in tongues, going after God. But something rose up on the inside of me. And I reached up, I looked at God, and I said, God, I'm not letting you go. I grab a hold of the horns of the altar. If nobody else in this building gets this breakthrough, I'm going to get it tonight. I'm not letting you go. And I started praying that for several minutes when all of a sudden I felt like a bolt hit me and it went boom. And I was like, whoa. I'm not like, don't get satisfied with the first little touch. 
I don't understand. These people get slain in the spirit, pop up 30 seconds later and go back to their seat like they're done. Did that's all you came for? Are you hearing me? Is that all you came for? Is that, 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 is that what you're going to be satisfied with? Just a little candy from Jesus? No. I don't want the toy car anymore. I want the keys to the Mercedes. We're talking a whole nother level, church. I said we're talking a whole nother level. Do you understand the power of the early church when they walked into cities? The cities trembled and said, these are the men that have turned the known world upside down. And with most of us, when we walk into a place, they didn't even know we showed up. Somebody say a life in the supernatural. Don't you think for one moment that you're going to be able to live a life in the supernatural by showing up at some meeting, someone's putting some oil on you, throwing a coat on you and saying, you got it. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to pursue. You're going to have to change the way you are. I kept praying. I'm not satisfied. I want more. Bam, I got hit a second time. I said, I'm not letting you go. I'm screaming it. I'm not letting you go. Bam, I got hurt. Hit a third time. I hit the floor, fell out in the aisle. I was flopping around like a fish out of water. I mean, all over the place. Some lady in the back. A demon buster. She couldn't discern the difference between the anointing and the devil. She jumped out of her seat. I'm coming! She came, she came running down, stood over me, said, come out! Come out! Come out! Now, have you ever had God mess with your body, but he leaves your brain perfectly intact? So my brain was working perfectly fine while she's yelling. And in my brain, as my body's going all over the place, I'm saying, Lord, shut her up. <laughs> Somebody say, Lord. Don't pass me by. Say it again. Say, Lord. Don't pass me by. Don't pass me by. Mm. Yes. I flopped around. I don't know for how long that lady left. That God drove her away. Thank God. I, it took me a long time. I, I, I finally, I was down there. I finally got up. My whole youth group's there, and I kind of crawled in my scene. I'm still trembling. It's, you know, it's kind of like that dis, kind of like that Bugs Bunny cartoon after you got zapped with electricity. It's like. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I said, man, I got a hold of something. Someone say, Lord, don't pass me by. Say it again, say, Lord, don't pass me by. You got to grab a hold of something. You got to be willing to press in. You got to be willing to humble yourself. You got to be willing to look like a fool. You got to not care what anybody else thinks. You got to stop playing the Christian game. You got to break out of your limitations and say, God, I don't care what it takes. I want the keys to the Mercedes. He said, where's your wife? She's in the tent. She's going to be pregnant. Tonight's the night, Abraham. Tonight's the night. She laughs. Then she lies. And then God turns to Abraham. He sends on the two angels. He said, go ahead and take care of Sodom and Gomorrah. I've got to have a chat. I can now, 
I have my son. He's no longer a child. Not only am I going to give him the fullness of the promise that is the keys to the kingdom, but I'm also going to open up his eyes to understand what I'm about to do. And I am going to give him the opportunity to change things. Abraham, I'm going to tear down Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, hey, Lord, 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 that's all right. But I got some relatives over there. And uh, uh, will you save it for 50? Lord said, all right, Abraham, that's cool. Hey, I'm giving you an opportunity to be a part of the process. Even though I already made up my mind to take care of it. But I will spare it for 50. And then Abraham said, well, wait, wait, wait. What about, what about 45? What about 40? He just kind of went on down the list. You know, we got it all listed out. He got down to 10. Will you spare it for 10? I'll spare it for 10. I always wonder. Why did he stop with 10? I would have gone right down. Will you spare it for Lot? Will you spare it for one? And I believe God would have, yeah, I'll spare it for one. Now, why would have God spared it for one? One righteous. Someone say one righteous. Because if God can have one righteous that'll finally grow up and lay a hold of the power and the authority and get the keys of the kingdom, they can bring enough power, authority, and anointing to turn a city of hundreds of thousands around. Somebody say, Lord, don't pass me by. Shh, I do believe the buildings turned the air off, so I don't know if you have their text number, Carrie. But tell them to turn that sucker back on. <laughs> Woo, that's all right. It's only seven. I'm getting out of my comfort zone. I think, I think we're feeling like we're coming out of the tent just a little bit tonight. And I'm going to see God wants to share his secrets with his servants. But the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. Oh, and it's time. Someone say it's time. It's time we grow up. It's time we begin to lay a hold of it. It's time we begin to humble ourselves. It's time we begin to sacrifice. Well, are you talking about money? It might be a lot of money. And as long as you're all hung up about that, here's your baba. As long as you're so afraid of some preacher taking your money from you, here's your little baba. Because if you're so spiritually weak, you can't discern between manipulation and the anointing. Oh. Come on. Come on. If you're so bound up with wounds, well, I got hurt. Here's your little baba. Come on, so well, come on, come on, come on, uh, come on. No, I operate under the keys of the kingdom, and I operate under the principles, and I understand sacrifices every area of my life. Yes, 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 yes. Can you imagine where we grow up? I know some of y'all get, I can hear the devil talking to a few of you right now. I hear his voice. He's sitting there saying, well, watch out, he's going to take another offering. No, I'm not going to take another offering. I, and even if I was, what would it matter? Amen. Huh? Oh, Jesus. Man, must have been huge offering you guys received for the church last night. No, it wasn't. We got to gave a good offering to Sid Roth, but for our church, you know what? It was a bunch of crinkled up $1 bills. You know why? Because you got a bunch of spiritual users that show up and bounce from meeting to meeting, coming to bleed off the price paid by somebody else. And they wonder why they walk out and they don't keep any little touch they even got. Aww. And why they got to go from conference to conference and meeting to meeting to get a touch instead of being the ones that are walking, talking, living, breathing manifestations of the glory of God. Because they don't even understand sacrifice. They don't even understand how to connect with the anointing, how to honor God. They don't understand. They don't understand. When you understand the anointing, as Bishop was preaching, the anointing, it'll change everything. But the anointing, it'll cost you everything. I'm going to talk to about four of you here right now that know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, I hope you do. But I'm telling you, you're ready to move into a whole new dimension in your life. Very often, God requires you to make a huge sacrifice. Sometimes you got to leave a job. Sometimes you got to sell or give away a house. Sometimes you got to, you got to, you got to walk away from friends and relationships and stuff. 
Sometimes you got to walk away from, I'm talking to somebody right now. Sometimes you got to walk away from position. You got to walk away from fame. You got to walk away from what you thought was the favor of God. You got to walk away. Why? Because God says, I'm tired of giving you a little toy car for your birthday. I want you to have the keys to the Mercedes. I want you to grow up. I want you to grow up. I want you to deal with me different, Abraham. I want you to deal with me different. I want you to deal with me as a son that's ready to take on the father's business. Oh. Come on. God is looking for some sons and daughters that he can trust them with the father's business. Somebody say, Lord. Oh, Karama Shakarama Shandere Bashande Shandere Baba Shandere Bashande It's gonna cost you everything It's gonna cost you to get 